So let's get into the seven principles. Let's go into the first principle, understanding your org. Uh, so here, uh, the first thing is you need to identify who are the stakeholders in the company. This is going to help you greatly, right? When you want to uh, 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 initiate new projects, right? You can go target the right people that can help you initiate these kind of projects. So here, for example, you need to know who is who, who are the decision makers within your org? Is this company, right? The company you work for, or the publisher or whatever, and this applies to any kind of uh, company or brand. Is it a product led? Is it an editorial led? Or is it a commercial led company? Because when you know that, you know that, okay, in order for me to get like a big project, maybe I need to go to editorial, convince them or sell them this project. And they are the ones who can put the project on the table, right? So you need to know what type of a company uh, it is. Uh, when I was the head of SEO, right, or whoever the head of SEO at your company, they need to have uh, at least once a year to meet all the VPs, meet all the directors, meet the CEO if possible and the C-level, right? This is extremely important. You need to talk about, okay, what are their goals? What they are success metrics? What they are roadmap? This is going to empower you with so much information. So when you're building your own roadmap, you can... Um, align it with their success metrics and roadmaps and so on, which makes it very easy for you to launch new projects, right? What are their biggest challenges? If they tell you, oh, I have a problem with videos, oh, this is a, a great opportunity to launch your video uh, optimization project, for example, and so on. You need to explain your role. Okay, this is SEO. Uh, it's not voodoo, right? It's it's uh, uh, science and art and explain a little bit about SEO and you need to tailor this to each uh, person that you are meeting, right? Quick overview, uh, take it as an opportunity to educate them in SEO and share recent projects and successes. If you do this in your roadmap, if you do this, right, you build, you start building or planting a seed with these kind of stakeholders so they remember you, oh, I spoke with John about uh, or the SEO lead about this, maybe we bring him in because we have some questions about the new project. Uh, and I always leave is like, please, hey, let us know if there's anything that we can help you with uh, there. Uh, understand your org process, right? Uh, you want to get from this valley to this uh, beautiful castle out there. Uh, how how does the projects uh, are managed in the company? Is this a, an is there an operation or project management team? How do you initiate new projects? Is there a certain forms? Is it just a Jira ticket? Uh, is uh, how you can submit a, a bug to the system? Is there a committee that approves new initiatives? When do they meet? Can SEO be a part of it, right? Uh, when to submit projects? For example, there are certain times, hey, we approve all the projects two quarters ahead, right? So you need to know all these kind of information. What is the planning cycle? Uh, is SEO part of the QA? Is there is a QA process to begin with? Uh, when does SEO team get involved, right? So there is a project and it's launched. When do you guys invite SEO? How do you know that SEO should be part of this uh, project? Uh, you also need to understand the org tech stack. And it surprises me that many SEOs work at companies and they don't know uh, a lot of their tech stack, right? You need to understand what type of CMS, is it homegrown? Is it like a WordPress or whatever? What type of CDN? What are the programming languages, the platforms they use? What type of APIs? What are the strengths and weaknesses of the system? And so on and so forth. You need to understand the editorial workflow, right? Uh, what tools do they use in the newsroom, right? When does the content, where does the content come from? Is it like uh, all print, all digital? Is it coming from broadcast? Is there a daily stand-up uh, to pitch new ideas, right? What are the editorial workflows? What type of tools are they using? So this is very important because when you understand the workflow, the biggest success uh, that I have seen is when you integrate SEO into the workflow. If your SEO is outside the workflow for editorial teams, you're going to face a lot of hard times. Um, so this is very important for you to understand. Here is an example. I did a Condé Nast. It was very hard for editorial teams to do SEO outside uh, of their workflow. Okay, where do they go most of the time? They go to the CMS. Okay, can we bake CMS? Uh, can we bake uh, SEO into their CMS? And then we start building this 
a, a tool. It's called SOAR. It had 10 rules and we tweak the rules based on data science, like what is like really makes an impact. And also we start to gamify the system, right? It's like, hey, uh, if you add a, a one internal URL, you get 10 points, right? So, uh, and we played around with it. And for example, when we publish this, so these are just simple uh, text and numbers, not the actual product. Uh, we saw an increase in our internal numbers when we start using this, right? And then we have seen also, we were tracking the results very well, and we have seen which of these rules made an impact. And you can see here, when you get from like red to yellow to green, the, the higher you get the score, the more traffic, which is the original, orange line. So this is like an actual example. Another example is like keyword research. It was very hard for editorial team to go outside to do keyword research. So we brought keyword research into the system. We integrated APIs and then they can say, this is evergreen, this is news. They put a keyword and they get the recommendations. Um, so these are just like two practical examples, understand brand's content. Is it a print first or a digital first content? Uh, are, is the company focused on breaking news or second day analysis or opinion? Uh, is it more like a tabloid content uh, publication or is it like quality journalism? Or we, this is beneath us. We will not like uh, uh, write something like this. Uh, news versus evergreen uh, versus evergreen news, right? So there is different types of content here. N understanding what type of content you publish uh, and what type of quality standards you have for your brand will help you a lot when you pitch kind of like new stories and ideas, right? Do you focus uh, mainly on new content or do you go back and refresh content? Uh, do you have what I call brand or quality content versus subscription content versus scale content? So these are all different um, tactics that you can use. So uh, for example, when you understand your brand and what type of content, and then you, you wanna like utilize competitors data to show them or we're missing here and there, this will help you to select the right competitors. Because if you are like a, a high quality publisher and then you bring them like a tabloid, uh, 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 brand and say, hey, they're making more traffic than us, they will not listen to you, right? They don't care at about publisher, right? They don't see them as a competitor, even though they're eating all their traffic, doesn't matter for them. So you have to understand what type of uh, brand you're working for. Here's a true example. We're working for the New Yorker. We have been trying to convince them for a while to do evergreen content. They will not focus much on that. But when you look at the content and when the SEO manager understood the content very well, then they came back to them and say, hey, how about we write best books, right? That we wrote this week. And I saw, they love the idea. Why? Because this is something that they care about. Uh, so the, the pitch had was very successful. Uh, you need to understand the company's success metrics, right? Are there KPIs? Are there OKRs? What are the business goals? Uh, uh, do they care about subscriptions, right? When you understand that, then you can speak or submit your project based on these KPIs and OKRs, right? This will give you a higher uh, um, a higher uh, percentage of like for these projects to to be accepted, right?